On this worksheet, we have some data. And that data is not in an Excel table. Here's some more data on this sheet. The next sheet has data also. Our goal is to create this table with formulas. And when we add a new sheet, there's some new data. Our formula solution updates. Now back in Excel Magic Tricks 1783, we saw how to do this with Excel tables. But here, we don't have tables. We just have worksheets with data. Now a bunch of people in the comments at YouTube said, hey, what about using 3D references inside of VStack? Now right off the bat, if we're going to take data from an Excel worksheet, there's lots of empty cells down here. And so on each sheet, if we consolidate, we're going to highlight more cells than we're going to need. But that's dangerous, because if someone comes and puts data here, it'll mess everything up. But here's the thing. This is common. People do keep data on worksheets. And I've done other videos, especially in Power Query, about how to consolidate tables from worksheets. Now the cool thing in our formula is we're going to say, hey, go from the start sheet all the way to the end sheet. And we're going to have these two bookends so we know when we add data, it has to be between the sheets. Because the thing is, we're going to use the colon to define a range of worksheets. And that will allow us to insert and have everything update. Now the other thing we're going to need to do, and a few people said different things. We need to make sure when we have a sheet reference that the apostrophes in a sheet reference are there. If I just typed start, there would be no apostrophe. So I know that that character causes an apostrophe. Bill says, has said, use a space. And Joseph said, hey, use a greater than or less than symbol. All right, let's just try this. Right off the bat, we're going to say equals v stack. Now the first thing we need is the field name. So I'm going to go to the first table, highlight the field names, comma. Now I'm up in the formula bar now, but I can see Array2. This is where we're going to do a 3D reference. And we want to notice that the structure of our data will always have the first record in B3 to C3. Click on the Start Sheet, Let's scroll up. And very carefully, we're going to select B3 to C3 and drag down more rows than we're ever going to need. I'm just going to stop at 132. I can see that up there. Now very carefully, I'm going to hold the Shift key and then click on End. Notice that that highlights all the sheets. Now we'll look at the syntax in just a second, but close parentheses and Enter. In the top cell, hit F2. Now, in Array 1, we simply have the field names from B2 to C2 on Sales 1. But in Array 2, we definitely have those little apostrophes we need. And there's the colon. Normally, we see that with cell references on either side. But in either case, if you insert something between B2 or C2, or with sheets, when you insert something, the range of items remains intact. And then for every one of those sheets, we're just going to go from B3 to C132. Now we have a bunch of zeros, and we need to filter them out. And we're going to have to use that formula element two times. So we'll use let, Alt, Enter. I'm going to use T as the variable name, T for table, comma. That's the formula element that T will represent. At the end, comma, Alt, Enter. And so for the calculation, I want to filter out the zeros. The array will be t, comma. And then we need to pick one of these columns. And I'm going to pick the second column because that has the numbers. So I'm going to choose columns. And the array is t, comma. And the column we want is 2. We could have used index also to extract a column. Now that is a single column, and I just want to say not equal to, and I'm going to say double quote, double quote, because the formula actually converted this to a 0. What's in the cell is an empty cell, and that syntax will work for an empty cell. And it will work for numbers or text. Close parentheses on filter, close on that, and that's our formula. That is just amazing. Take a look at that again.
how many decades have people been wanting to consolidate data from across sheets? And there it is. Now let's point to Sales 3. And I'm just going to simulate adding a new sheet by copying this sheet. And by the way, anytime you have parentheses with a number inside, when you copy it, it automatically increments. So if I click and drag this up, you can see the piece of paper. That's the move operation. As soon as I hold Control, I see the plus symbol. And that means I'm copying. Now I'm going to let go of my mouse, not Control. And now I have a new sheet with a new table. When I go over to Combine, that is absolutely amazing. There's the new data. If I go to Sales 1, add a quad, 5,000, and Enter. When I go over to Combine, there's the new record, the new world of dynamic spilled arrays with all of the amazing new functions are going to convert old school Excel into a whole new, hardly imagined yet, new school of Excel worksheet formulas. All right, it's awesome hanging out on our online Excel team. Thanks to all these teammates. We'll see you next video.